Contrary to popular belief, I am, in fact, the main character. When I am in public, I make sure that everyone around me knows that I am actually more important. Not only that, but I am better than them. Everything has to be about me. 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 What the hell? What? Where did everyone go? No. I don't want to be alone. Please take me back. I'm sorry. You're not alone. Who's there? No. No! The what about me effect is a new phenomenon that was coined by the TikToker at Sarah the Book Fairy. It's sort of a new wave of main character syndrome, except make it more chronically online. Oh boy, buckle up. Today we'll be getting into both the online and sadly offline uh, occurrences of this phenomenon, some examples of this, and ways that I can overinterpret this into signifying the inevitable collapse of society. Let's get into it. And here are three signs that you may have it and how you can stop it. I want to talk to you guys about something I've decided to call the what about me effect. As I said, what about me was coined by a woman on TikTok this past September. I'll let her explain it for all of you because she explained it so well not because I don't feel like paraphrasing what she said. The what about me effect basically combines individualistic culture with being chronically online. The what about me effect is when someone sees something that doesn't really pertain to them or they can't fully relate to and they find a way to make it about them or try to seek out certain accommodations for their very nuanced, personalized situation. Instead of recognizing that maybe they are just not the target audience for that thing. We make everything about ourselves and seek out accommodations and validation for everything. You all might have noticed this phenomenon at one point or another. I mean, it existed well before TikTok ever did. In the form of main character syndrome, as it's called, of course a sickness nearly as fatal as that of being chronically online. But I need to know, do you all remember that one tweet? Very popular tweet, I'll just read it for all of you. Hi, most annoying person you've ever encountered here. I noticed this post you wrote in three seconds doesn't line up with every experience I've ever had. This is extremely harmful to me, the main character of the universe. Very harmful to me, the reincarnation of Jesus Christ. No, he had main character syndrome. Okay. This person tweeted this in 2021. Ahead of her time, truly. What about me is sort of an evolution from main character syndrome. Main character syndrome describes a tendency among people to view themselves as a lead character in their own life story. I definitely don't do that, by the way. And in the lives of those around them. But unlike main character energy, those with main character syndrome can be self-centered and self-absorbed. <laughs> Again, not me. In her video, Lockwood hypothesized that the What About Me phenomenon occurs in an quote-unquote individualistic culture combined with being chronically online. Perhaps it isn't validation in the form of a like that the What About Me effect is seeking, but rather some recognition in a society where hyper-individualism prevails. Again, we'll get into why this is going to lead to the eventual downfall of society soon enough. I just wanted to first and foremost explain what this new term means. So many new terms. We should probably look at some popular examples of these effects to get a better understanding of it all. We should probably, but we're not going to. I'm actually done with the video now. Oh God, I think it's shit. The example that Sarah referenced in her video was a harmless video that a woman posted on TikTok. It was a bee soup recipe. Keyword bean. This is extremely important. It will make you explicitly shit yourself all over the place. So. However, this woman, she posted this high iron recipe to help people on their periods. What a trooper. Actually not, she's actually a uh, Lucifer. Uh, yeah, unfortunately this was not well received by a lot of people on TikTok. No, as we will see, 
uh, these chronically online people who are hyper individualistic wanted to turn it around and make it about themselves. Under the video were serious comments of people asking for replacements for the beans. In the 13 bean soup recipe, yes. Hey, I see you're posting a beef burger recipe and I have to ask, what about all the people who will implode like an H-bomb if they come within five feet of beef? Huh? What about us? <gasps> this is a very popular example of this phenomenon. The bean soup is like Gen Z's kids on TikTok's 9-11. Similar consequences to 9-11 as well. Before there was bean soup, however, there was this. My husband and I wake up every morning and bring our coffee out to our garden and sit and talk for hours. Every morning. It never gets old and we never run out of things to talk to. Love him so much. Bitch. You should fuck off and go to the husband, I guess. <laughs> right? Oh, that fateful October 21st, 2022. A uh, day, I remember, the leaves were crisp. It was 52 degrees outside. Such a beautiful day. Ruined. I mean, I blame it on Elon. On it. <coughs> oh, sorry. Uh, I blame it on China. I love Elon Musk and X.com. If you were on Twitter when this happened, you are eligible for funds from a class action lawsuit because, by God, you probably have the same amount of PTSD as a Vietnam War vet does. Now, the term what about me had yet to be coined at this point, but I'd say it definitely applied in this case. This tweet, just by looking at it, is relatively harmless, right? A woman has time to spend with her husband. Good for her. I personally don't do that, but who cares? Well, to people on Twitter, everything is a big deal. You said you hate cold toilet seats. Well, how do you think people who don't have asses feel? They'll never feel the cold succulent embrace of a cold toilet seat wrapping around their ass cheeks ever again because they don't have butts. A pretty general question that people had for this woman was whether her and her husband work, which the wife cleared up. They have their mornings to each other and they work for about eight hours in the evening. That's just their routine. Maybe she is just more privileged than most people. Has time to spend with her husband? Well, again, that's bad. You see, uh, one person said, I wake up at 6 a.m., shower, and go to work for a shit that is a minimum of 10 hours long. This is an unattainable goal for most people. And I just know this motherfucker is that dude. Those dudes covered in mud in that one video, fucking slick slacking away, rubbing some fucking oil up against each other and moving some machinery back and forth in a simultaneous motion together. I just know he's that kind of guy, okay? I mean, so sad, right? Uh, this post wasn't all about you. How could she? If you read the replies, which clearly you have a death wish, if you're gonna do that, <laughs> they are filled with people saying shit like this. Ah! How dare she, she enjoy a, a morning when I can't? I have no limbs or head. I can't even drink coffee. I, I, I can't. I, 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 oh, oh. Guys, I feel like the past like two weeks from my memory have just like completely disappeared. I, I can't. It's it's like it's like a black hole where my my memories are supposed to be. <laughs> what was I even just talking about? <gasps> oh, this is really bad. <laughs> Mr. Musk. What is it, Jared? No, he. He needs a new chip immediately. Well, you better get to it then. Yes, yes, sir. <laughs> Seriously, though, people were in an absolute frenzy after this tweet was posted, which is nothing new for Twitter, but for our culture at large, I'd say this is a little bit of a dangerous sign. It's this idea of how dare you not consider every single personal experience before posting a video, or you've done something wrong by not considering me, Lockwood said. It's shaming someone for sharing something just because their experience isn't a universal one. I think it can also sometimes come from projection or insecurity, depending on what the comment actually is. We're socialized to place ourselves 
front and center in discussions and prioritize ourselves over others. I think like the creator alludes to, it would be worth chatting with folks in other countries that are more collectivist to see if this still persists. But there are other infrastructural and cult cultural dynamics that can contribute too, Maddox said. In terms of infrastructure, the highly tailored nature of social media algorithms had made us think of all the content being pushed to us should be related to us. And if it's not in ways that can absolutely not be accounted for by technology, I don't like beans, I'm bald, etc. There's a disconnect people may struggle with, she explained. I mean, the For You page is literally for you. A few days ago, you know, I watched a GTA 5 edit, okay? I watched a few of them, okay? You know, the next game is coming out. Huge gamer moment, okay? Right, okay, so I like, I like the videos, okay? Now my TikTok algorithm is just filled with GTA 5 edits. <laughs> You know, I will say, there is something about Stephen Ogg. I... I can't explain it. Um, anyway. <laughs> These algorithms are highly sophisticated. Built so we can scroll forever and trap ourselves in an infinite loop of nothingness in seven second TikTok clips. Rarely do I see a tweet in my timeline that is something that I disagree with. And if it is... <laughs> blocked and reported! I mean, I don't want to see anything that anyone says, for that matter, that doesn't align with my views. I think, unfortunately, there are some people who literally just never talk to people IRL. See, you know, IRL. That's not someone that actually... There are people who don't talk to people in real life as much as they do online. So a lot of us are stuck in these echo chambers filled with only what we like and agree with. Anything else, and people will respond aggressively to it and burn those people at the stake like they did in the Salem Witch Trials, because how dare you say something I don't like? TikTok's approachability is also why the app blew up in 2020 during the COVID-19 pandemic. As millions of people around the world were forced to quarantine and indoors, TikTok emerged as a space where people could escape the mundane and romanticize their lives. The hashtag, hashtag romanticize your life, even encouraged users to find beauty in their everyday routines. Internet users quickly became the main character in their own lives, taking control of the narrative in a world that increasingly lacked control. The out of the main character energy trend, came its irritating little sibling, main character syndrome. Perhaps a foundation for what what about me effect we see today. In a world that seems to be lacking control on all cylinders, ongoing conflict over militarized land, politicians ousted of positions by their own party, and disputes over artificial intelligence affecting the entertainment industry. Jesus Christ, why don't you just list every bad thing going on? One would argue that becoming the main character in your own life is actually an emotionally mature way to comp compartmentalize it all. Why shouldn't you be the main character in your own life? It's your life after all. Even on apps like TikTok, algorithms are built for us to assume the role of the main character when content feeds are literally called the For You page. Um, exactly what I said. You guys fucking stealing my vibe right now. A very popular example of this main character slash individualist effect can be seen by that of the likes of the Tube Girl. What the fuck is that? Good question. Uh, now I know you don't suffer from being chronically online. Sabrina Bassoon was the girl who started this all. Curse our following turn around. Basically, what Sabrina would do is film herself dancing on the train, subway, the tube, and upload it to TikTok. She ended up starting a viral trend with tons of people, mostly women, trying to emulate the confidence that Sabrina displayed in her videos. To dance unabashedly on a train and film it without caring what these people think about you could be called confidence, I guess. Um, the goal of participating in this trend is to say, I don't care and to just live because these people won't see you again, most likely. So why does it matter? As I always say, GGG, Gaslight, Gatekeep, Girl Boss. I would say that doing this on a train is probably the least weird thing train commuters have seen. So to call this a disturbance would probably be an over-exaggeration. I mean, train commuters in New York see rats having orgies on the train, so do you really think they care about a girl dancing in the middle of the train? I don't know. There is an argument to be made, however, that this woman should be filming random people while dancing just for the sake of confidence. I mean, if you were really confident, couldn't you just be confident and not flaunt it on TikTok? Hey guys, look how confident I am right now. Guys, I'm so confident. <laughs> oh, confidence, right? <laughs> God, I'm so fucking ugly. I don't know, man. I mean, these are the same people who can't ask the cashier for help. Hey, I can't either, but you know, I, I'm not I'm not doing the trend, so. Anytime you step out in public or you get on the subway, strangers are just gonna judge you no matter what, whether you sit quietly with your headphones or stand up and dance crazily. Okay, but one is gonna be a little more judgment, but whatever.
So I feel like it's just about not giving power to anyone else, uh, one girl who participated in the trend said. And if you have a song that makes you feel hot and confident, why not have some fun with it? That'd be true, right? But this trend, to me, is just a perfect example of main character energy, some would say syndrome. For now, it's not malicious, but it could turn into something more sinister. I mean, being extroverted and lacking self-awareness isn't really a show of self-confidence in my personal opinion, and you wouldn't want to develop main character syndrome from dancing on a train, now would you? The constant quest for validation, if left unexamined, can harm individuals' mental well-being. Users must recognize when their own online behaviors may originate from deeper, unresolved personal issues. Identifying and addressing the what about me effect can foster the development of more inclusive and empathetic online communities. Remember the one video of the girl dancing in a Costco during the beginning of the pandemic? Yeah, I do. I do. After going over all of that, I figured for funnies, and not because I ran out of very popular examples of this phenomena, <laughs> I'm busy, okay? That we could look at some examples of main character syndrome on R-E-D-D-I-T, my favorite website. All the videos that I've handpicked are perfect examples of how main character syndrome deprives you of empathy and self-awareness. So let's watch some of these videos and I'm gonna diagnose whether I personally think these people have main character syndrome or not. <laughs> Now, this woman is already invoking the name of Jesus Christ the Lord, signifying the most main character in uh, in the world, perhaps. I know for a fact, I'm already diagnosing she has main character syndrome. She might have another syndrome, typically called uh, schizophrenia, but I'm not a medical professional. Absolutely main character syndrome to be in an aisle of a supermarket and to yell at people to get out of the aisle because you have to shop by yourself. <laughs> Jesus was known for being mean at people and casting people out of society. So it makes a lot of sense. This was great. Playing your guitar somewhere people can escape from. Now, where do you think this is? Maybe, um, I was just about to make a terrible joke that I can't make, but it, it is kind of funny. You guys can just imagine what I was going to say. Imagine you pull this guitar out, you know, it's 9 11, everyone's ready to jump out the window, and you just start playing the guitar. You're like, Amazing Grace. <laughs> You're like the fucking violinist on Titanic, as everyone's just jumping out the window, killing themselves. It's so evil. You're the one making people jump. So this is a girl playing West Virginia. Horrible song choice. Why are you playing that song? See, if you're singing that song that says something about you, in my personal opinion, you got married to your brother. Yeah, yeah. You can tell everyone in the elevator is extremely displeased because they're all stuck with this girl singing a stupid song. You are not the main character. You're not in a movie. You're in real life. That man next to you looked like he was about to commit five different felonies. So I would stop if I were you. It's so sad because no one else is singing with her. One more time. Pardon me. Country roads. Hard watch, certified hard watch. Absolutely diagnosed with main character syndrome. How do you even have the gall to do something like that? It's still not progress here. What? Still not progress. Oh. I understand. First up. <laughs> if you feel more comfortable, go whip your dick out over there. If you're so uncomfortable, bare your ass cheeks to the doorway over there to the people in the gym, okay? Because I'm trying to film my lat spread. <laughs> so I'd watch your tone with me. Absolutely main character syndrome. Guys who film in the locker room like this, you gotta stop. Film in the gym where you know no one's gonna bother you. Don't film in the locker room where people get naked. What? Guys, I'm gonna go film uh, in the bathroom stall that someone's already in. I've never done that before. You know, after making fun of all those people, I need to know, do I have main character syndrome? Do I suffer from this? I have a video from a TikTok psychologist 
and she's given us three signs that we might have main character syndrome. I want you all to play along. Let me know if you have main character syndrome. We're gonna figure it out right here, right now. I'm also gonna figure out whether I uh, am a sociopath in another video. Number one, you think the world revolves around you. Well, I don't think that, I know it. It's called the the leucocentric theory. It's the idea that the, the fucking earth revolves around me. Very well documented theory. Christopher Copernicus wrote about it. I That's literally just a scientific fact. Moving on to the next one. All right, this is not really fucking helping me. Number two, you frame yourself and your life as perfect online. That's because it is perfect. I never have problems. When I say my life is perfect, I mean it. I mean, <laughs> I have so much money. I have 10 Lamborghinis, as I previously stated. I literally have the perfect life. I'm not dissatisfied with anything. Can, can this girl say something that's actually fucking helpful? Number three, you aren't good at taking criticism. Fuck, yes I am! You... No! Now we can finally get into why this phenomenon will lead to the collapse of society. It's definitely not gonna be Elon Musk because Elon Musk is great. China is bad, and it will be China's fault. Uh, the fuck did I just say? Yeah. Sarah made a follow-up video to her more popular video that we looked at in the beginning of the video, clarifying why she finds what about me to be so dangerous in our hyper-individualistic society. Here's why comments like this actually do so much damage. Comments like the ones I'm talking about in the what about me effect make a mockery of real important arguments for equity and inclusion. Which is one of the reasons why when we fight for real equity and inclusion, we're not taken seriously. It's the kind of shit that like Fox News will pick out and weaponize in order to make people who are fighting for real equity and inclusion look bad. We run into danger though when each what about me comment distracts or detracts from an important conversation at hand. When it comes to diversity, equity, and inclusion, it goes without saying that a recipe video for bean soup isn't necessarily taking away power from those who prefer not to eat beans. But for so-called chronically online users leaving what about me type comments on social media, Lockwood believes their supposed concern for others, for example, those who can't eat beans, is only masquerading as a fight for inclusivity. When you have chronically online, individualistic, libtards, pardon my French, who go online complaining about stupid shit like a fucking soup recipe, that wasn't for them in the first place. <laughs> it's diverting from actual conversations. It's just another reason for the right to weaponize liberals' stupidity. One person complaining about soup leads to actual demands from disabled people for needing more accessible spaces being ignored by uh, people. Sure, these people aren't being very rational in using the extreme people as examples, but since when did rational people make the majority of the decisions in the world? <gasps> Never. Tonight, the, music so loud. Oh. the frustrating thing is comments like the ones I'm talking about in the What About Me effect make a mockery of real arguments for inclusivity, which causes people not to take valid, important points about equity and inclusion seriously, Lockwood wrote. It's more than annoying comments on TikTok. The ripple effect of these comments is that it prevents marginalized groups with important points to make from being heard. I saw one commenter refer to this as weaponizing inclusivity, and I think that's a great way of putting it. Still, Lockwood has proposed some resolution to the what about me effect that's fueling main character syndrome. As individuals, it's really important for us to be cultivating more self-awareness. On an individual level, it is our responsibility to cultivate for our own self-awareness, self-reflect, ask yourself, why do I feel the need to comment about this video and make it about me? Why do I feel the need to shame a creator for posting something that I can't relate to? Not every single thing that we see is going to be relatable to us, and that's okay, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't mean that someone has done something wrong by doing something you can't relate to. Developing a sense of digital empathy, where one actually listens to and respects diverse perspectives can also be transformative. Practicing restraint and personalizing every interaction and being open to learning from others can counteract the effect. Fostering offline connections and interests can help balance the excessive need for online affirmation. Content creators and platform administrators can play a role by encouraging positive and constructive discussions and setting community guidelines that promote empathy and inclusivity. Hyper-individualism can lead to loneliness and isolation, which is only furthered by people's aggressiveness towards those who disagree with them. By the way, I don't mean like, you know, someone called me the Esler. I mean, you should just fucking get over it and be nice. Uh, no, I'm talking about like, <laughs> you 
general disagreements. I mean, even when it comes for more serious things, do you really expect people to listen to you when you're not coming from a place of respect? Now, that's a topic for a whole other day, respectability politics, right? <laughs> but generally, I think we should listen to people and be open to what they have to say before coming at it with a point of aggressiveness, right? I'm gonna link an article down below that highlights how you can be the main character in a healthy way. If you're absolutely dying and foaming at the mouth, fluffing, uh, to know. Hyper individualism, main character syndrome, what about me, Chron being, being chronically online, all under the same umbrella of selfishness, loneliness, and brain rotting from social media. If you think that you suffer from any of these things, well, seek some help because you're done for. Anyway, that's it for this video and that's it for me. I really hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you like the topic of discussion. Let me know what you all think about the aforementioned effects, phenomena, whatever. Just comment down below anything you want to comment down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like me, you can subscribe. I post comedy and commentary videos every Sunday at 12 p.m. Eastern, so if that sounds like a good thing. Make sure to subscribe and turn the notification bell so you know when I post a video. I really hope you all enjoyed this video, and I really hope I see you all in the next one. I better. Bye. I got nightmares in my head, I fear That the thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper That was a pretty good recording. You happy with that, Kovu? Huh? I'm happy with that video. Um... My mom must have got home early. Mom? Is that you? I notice you've been having problems with your chip implant. No, no, I, 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 I don't, I don't want another chip. I need to give you a new one. I'm sorry. Please don't, don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> How'd I get here? All I remember was recording my video. <laughs> what the fuck? Why do I have the sudden urge to buy a Tesla? <laughs>